Hello and welcome to Currency Point presented by me, Evan Lucas for FP Markets. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature. None of it should be relied upon as any form of personal advice. FP Markets does not know your personal scenario nor your personal financial goals and therefore none of it should be relied upon as any form of advice at all. It is just general in nature only. As you can see, we're in lockdown again for us here in Victoria and you're in New South Wales. It's going across the country and quite quickly, particularly for those that are watching this in the Australian country. I would point out though that the interesting thing about the whole lockdown movement is that it's not really filtering through into the currency. And, and let's work through that and bear with me with regard to how I make that claim, is that we saw the unemployment data this week. It was incredibly strong, best we've seen since December 2010, with the unemployment rate falling to 4.9%. Participation was incredibly strong still at 66.2%. That's a fraction below the record we saw in March, which was 66.3%. And most of it's in full-time employment, which is a really positive, positive thing. Now, that was at the same time that New South Wales showed a surging in cases. It's also the same time that Victoria announced it was going back into the five-stage lockdown that we've now got and the fifth one they've done. You've also got issues in Queensland. What was interesting is that the initial flick up from the employment data moderated, which is not unsurprising, but it held basically where it was at 74.8, even got as far as 74.9. But what really matters, and I've been speaking about this for probably on two months now, and I'm really strong on it and remain so, is stateside data. And stateside data is driving everything in FX world. And that is where we need to continue to concentrate because it feeds into the US dollar strength that I think personally in the next short period is gonna continue on. And that is we got the Philly Fed Index, which although it fell from 31 to about 21, is still well and truly above what they normally see as stand about 17. The big one was the Empire State. New York State saw its highest read on record in July of 43. Expectations were for 18 and it was up from 17 the month before. The spread across the employment, services, and new orders were astounding. And it shows you that the US is surging. That, employ uh, that CPI read we got this week as well at 5.4%. The one to really look at, the core read of 4.5%, the best read since 1991, has to start putting doubt in the idea that yes, there is transitory factors at play, particularly things like used cars, sales that's clear at 45% makeup, that's not gonna continue on. But there are signs there's structural parts to it. Then you look at what came out from Jay Powell and what he said is that they are monitoring what could be a little bit more structural than what was originally discussed. You also then listen to the idea that they are monitoring what they are gonna do around policy, understand that as well. But he is showing signs that maybe they need to start thinking about movements around rates and the possibility of bringing it forward. Then you get someone like Jamie Bullard, who I know is an uber, bell, uh, uber bell hawk. He also talks about it from the point of view that when we start tapering, and he thinks it should start pretty much now, it doesn't want to be on autopilot. It needs to be flexible. And I think this is the new language we're going to start hearing. Flexibility around the program. It needs to start easing back, but it's going to be, you know, done for what the data says per month rather than what we've seen in the past where it is on autopilot. So all those things I think are, are positives in terms of what we see and that's why you've started to really see that US dollar strength come through. Look at Euro dollar, it's now down to the low ends of 118s consistently. My view is it'll hit 117 pretty soon. Look at cable back into 138s, pushing also down to 137. And then the Aussie, dropped well away from what it got from our data, which is understandable, to the very lower end of 74.1 was the low. It's an inch away from the record low we saw for 2021. And again, all the data suggests that it's a US dollar positive. And for that reason, that's my positioning, staying long USD.